Hello, fans and friends of The White Vault. I'm Caitlin Statz, the writer and creator of The White Vault. And I'm Travis Vengroff, the sound designer and producer. And together, we are Fool and Scholar Productions. As season three of The White Vault comes to an end, we have some important announcements. Please listen for answers to some of the questions regarding the show. First, season four of The White Vault return in October 2020. Season four is our second to last season, as the main story arc for The White Vault will conclude after its fifth season. But we have other stories set within the White Vault universe, such as Imperial and Artifact, and later this spring 2020, we will also be releasing the beginning of our newest spin-off, Eluka, a White Vault miniseries. The White Vault is only possible because of support from our fans. We are 100% indie, working from our home to create these stories. Supporters help make this possible and have helped to keep the White Vault episodes ad-free for three seasons. Creating shows to entertain you has become our full-time job, so please consider supporting our works via Patreon. A link is provided in the show notes. Crafting the White Vault, from first draft scripts to the episode release, takes time and money, and we want to continue creating. We love what we do, and we do everything as a two-person team except the acting, translation, and music. While you wait for the White Vault main season to return in October, we will be releasing other fully produced shows. The new White Vault story, Iluka, will be releasing on our Patreon soon. And in our public feeds, we will have new episodes for Dark Dice, a new in-depth five-part horror story for Liberty Tales from the Tower, and the second season of our sci-fi, Vast Horizon. So please stick around until the end of the episode for additional information on the upcoming Aluka miniseries, convention appearances we hope to meet you at, and our special thanks for people who've helped make our work and a special thanks for people who've helped make this work possible. And now, the season three finale of The White Vault. The following documents and recordings are the tenth instalment in a compilation detailing the events of the archaeological team sent to base camp Piedra consisting of Dr. Carito Ureta, Lucas Criado, Ava Olivia Moreno, Dr. Josefa Guerrero, Simon Hall, and Dr. Xiao Liu. Following the previous instalment, doctoral candidate Miss Moreno was the only member of the archaeological team outside the inner hall when the avalanche shook the ice field and mountains. In the winter months, snowstorms and rainfall in the Patagonian ice fields can drastically affect the landscape. Worsened by heavy winds, such storms can reduce visibility and lead to glacial calving, ice collapses and avalanches. During these conditions, travel is not advised. The White Vault video posted online by a couple of Japanese tourists under the username Shimbashi223. The translation of the title is South America Adventure Part 12, The Water Woman. In the video, the first six minutes show a group of tourists and their guide walking through dense fog and areas of rocky vegetation before the relevant section begins. The rocky shore and the eventual water of the glacial melt runoff lake can be seen, but none of the nearby Patagonian mountain range is visible. This lake is a common hiking destination for tourists coming from the nearby village of El Chelten, Argentina. Everything okay? Are there dangerous animals here? We heard something in the water. We have puma here, but they stay away from people and it's a real treat to see them. What did you hear? Something in the rocks and the water. It sounded big. I would not worry. We are making a lot of noise, so anything even slightly dangerous will most likely leave us be. Do you think the fog will lift? We have not seen the mountains. Sorry, it doesn't look like we will see them today. The fog has been here for several days now. Don't worry, Azami. I've seen the weather for our next stop in Buenos Aires, and it should be very nice. We still have a lot to see. So, yeah. 
でも景色を見たかったわ。で、誰か咳した。人じゃない。えー、小四郎早く助けなきゃ女の人だわ大丈夫なの It's cold. Yes, sorry. One moment. That was the only video from Shinbashi 223 to include the water woman. During the brief shot that showed the woman, It is revealed to be Miss Moreno. She is difficult to identify at first due to her state. Her face is covered in mud and blood, and she's wearing dirty climbing gear and a full pack. She was brought to a clinic in El Chal 10. At the clinic, the nurses found Miss Moreno's phone in her jacket pocket, and all of the stored digital and handwritten documents reported thus far were stored in her pack. The following audio recording is from Miss Moreno's smartphone. Algo salió muy mal. No podía llegar a ellos. No podía entrar. Solo me fui por un minuto. No, it's all those episodes. Something went terribly wrong. I couldn't get to them. I couldn't get in. I was only gone for a minute. And once everything started to fall, I couldn't even hear them anymore. I think something is out there. Out here. Things. They don't come for me. I think they. They just want to watch me. It's so hard. <laughs> I'm on the east side. I went over the mountain. I need to make it down into town. I need to get help. The entrance closed up, but they're still in there. They're in there. <gasps> If I don't make it down, Maybe someone will find my body and this recording. I'm taking the password off my phone. We recorded so much. I'm Dr. Liu's phone, too. Her code is 8932. Listen, please find the cave. The remains of the base camp are still there. Maybe. Our path, the archaeological team, we got stuck. They got trapped. We need to find them. There are places we haven't explored yet. More paths into that cave. They have to be in there. Me, I can't see it, but the the shadow. It's so tall, so thin. We think it took Doctor Reta. Please find them. Please find us. Keep going, but please find us. The following is a recording of myself and Mr. Graham Kasner from my personal smartphone. We were discussing the records from Base Camp Piedra following the final recovered document up to this point. Upon initial examination by the local doctor, Miss Morona was found to have sustained several injuries. One of her arms was severely bruised and infected. She had two broken ribs on the right side, with additional bruising on her back, face, and tailbone. Several fingers were bruised and strained from her climb. 
The local doctor postulated that Miss Moreno had fallen from a height of over 20 feet several times during her mountain climb, but he was not aware of her confrontations with Lucas or the events at Base Camp Piedra. This concludes so, that she made it out. Good for her. When's my passport going to get here? Today. Good. I'm not here to help you for whatever this is you're trying to sell me on. I've had enough of Svalbard and mountains and snow for the next few months at least. So if you have any questions, why don't you go ask Eva since she made it out? A whole week in this hospital. I have the documents from Outpost Freestead. I know what you went through out there. No, you don't. I lived through that shit and I don't even know what the fuck we went through out there. And from what you've told me, no one can confirm the caves we found, or the village, or or those statues. So no one knows a goddamn thing. I may know more than you believe. You're not an unintelligent man, Mr. Kasner. You can see the parallels. The snows, the glyphs. I never saw glyphs. Dr. Della Torre did. Mr. Thorson as well. I can show you the documents, the recordings. No. I don't want to see that fucking bunker again. Or hear that radio. What are the other ones? Of what, exactly? The other parallels. The inability to leave. I left. As did Miss Moreno, but the timing of snowstorms and abnormally heavy fog should not be ignored. There is also the issue of the lure. Whereas Dr. Uretta's team was lured to the Patagonian site by the promise of archaeological findings, your repair team was lured by the damage to Outpost Freestead. We were not lured. We were sent. We were paid. Up front. Based on the records from Base Camp Piedra, I believe Lucas Criado knew from the beginning exactly what to expect when he went up that mountain. He was their guide, but he knew what they were facing. There were only limited records of his mania, but I agree with the eventual consensus that he knew. And our team? You think Seija Group knew? Jonas couldn't hurt a fly. He didn't have to. There are recordings collected where Mr. Thorison appears to apologize for his actions. And Seizure Group's attempts to locate the original team and the lost rescue team have ceased. There are two acceptable interpretations. They caved under the media backlash regarding loss of life, or they have prepared for the eventuality. Who knows I'm here? Who knows I made it out of Svalbard? I haven't told anyone. Not yet. The crew that found you thinks they reported it to Seeger Group, and they've been paid their reward. Your family has not been informed. And you? It's a lot of money to send a team out to the outpost. Maybe more than to get me out without a passport. So what do you have invested in this? I am not sure yet. I have a lot more information to gather. No. The site in Patagonia, it was seen... It's not possible to have contained it. They reported the site to the local authorities, to the universities. They had funding for the expedition, for the resources and equipment. We have not found the government official with whom Mr. Criado is said to have communicated with. We could not find a helicopter pilot named Hector, who recorded flights on the date of their departure from El Chelten. It appears most of the communication with local officials was done through Mr. Criado's account with Sina Bene Retreats, and Sina Bene Retreats has yet to release a statement, but they do not have these collected documents. There is still a lot of loose ends here, but the time frame isn't closed. How? The company, the universities, they must have known their employees did not return. Sina Bene does not appear to be concerned as of yet, due to the short amount of time since these events occurred. Given that it's entirely plausible that they sent Mr. Criado to the site to bury the findings of or manipulate a new discovery, I would wager they do not expect him to return either. And Eva? What has she said? Miss Moreno has yet to awaken. Recent conversations with the nurses at the clinic and my contact in El Chelten have told me she should regain consciousness at any moment now. This... this is recent? 
Miss Moreno was found by the Japanese tourists three days ago. The video was quickly removed from the hosting site after I collected it. What's your plan with all this? I am sending a rescue team to find the survivors from the archaeological site. I want them back alive, and I would like as much information as possible salvaged from the site and their work. I would like you to head the team. I can think of no sum of cash on this shitty planet that could convince me to do that. Once you have all of the information, you can choose to or not. I can't force you. Regardless, your medical bills here, your passport, and your flights back to Canada are covered. And you're not going, yourself? I have somewhere else to be. Like I said, I'm not going. So, please feel free to leave now. I would like to know how you survived. We were in a cave with a natural water feature. Me... Rosa and Jonas. We'd been using the water to fish out lamprey to eat after all our provisions spoiled. We couldn't stay there forever, so we left. But the caves were unmapped, and eventually we ended up back in the same room. Something came up from that water. It, uh... It grabbed me and pulled me under. Something had me by the waist, but with the shotgun in between us, I I pushed the gun away and I let it go for a second. I swam up, straight up. I I thought I was going up through the same cave. Fuck. I was just happy to have found a way up, but it wasn't where we had been, the others, and I had no way of navigating back. It was a whole new set of tunnels. I walked through those tunnels for all too long. Went through every light I had that still worked. Sometimes it was just black. The cave led out to the coast. And sometime later that Russian boat crew picked me up. The thing you encountered in the water. Can you describe it? I was underwater in the dark with just my headlamp to see anything. Uh, I, I don't know what I saw except for a lot of water. The, the thing that dragged me under, it was, it was strong. It moved like, I don't know, like uh, fucking claws or fingers, like, like the legs of a crab. I, I think they could have crushed my ribcage if that was the intent. I don't know what you want me to say, but that's it. It was it was dark, there was water everywhere. I, I was lucky. Did it follow you through the caves? I didn't stop long enough to find out. And the timing? You were gone for weeks. A few days in those caves, maybe a week, and more time on the shore. The coast wasn't populated pure happenstance that a boat even found me. So, are we done? Your passport has arrived. The hospital says you can leave. Your passport, flight confirmation, and tickets are in the envelope. A taxi will arrive for you outside in about an hour, and your flight departs in four. I will be contacting you again, Mr. Kasner, when I receive further documents. I still believe I may be able to convince you. Until then... Travel well. The following recording is from a follow-up call with Mr. Kasner after his return to Canada several days later. Who is this? I have sent you an email. Please open the attachment. I never gave you my email or my personal number. Leave me alone. Please open the attachment. Is this a fucking joke to you? Where did you get this? When Dr. Liu and Dr. Guerrero recovered the climbing hammer from Mr. Criado, they found a body in the cave's lower chambers and took photos. While the camera was found, it took a while to recover the photos in any usable quality. This... this is from Patagonia? Yes. Do you still want me to head the team? 
Yes. There's someone I want on the team. I worked with her before in Greenland and on Kamchatka. Vukovic. I'll send her contact number over. Tell her I asked, and uh, you're gonna pay her double whatever it is you're already thinking. I'll reach out to her and get back to you. My contact will also join you. Mahir Aisa. He's already in El Chelten and has the equipment ready. He's adamant about leaving soon. Miss Moreno is awake and she wants to go back. She woke up? And she thinks it's a good idea to go back up there? She seems adamant. When do I leave? There is a flight leaving Halifax Stansted in three hours. Get there and you'll have the confirmation on arrival. You'll be on the ground in El Calafati within 24 hours. Mahir will pick you up from there. I'll be there. Contact was made with Ms. Dragana Vukovic within the hour following that discussion. She had just completed guiding a group of hikers on the Choque Quiera hike in Peru and was prepared to leave for El Calafati within the day. Her travel time was significantly shorter and she arrived in El Calafati before Mr. Kasner. Mahir Aisa, my contact sent to the area and a skilled mountain guide, was there with Ms. Vukovic when Mr. Kasner's flight landed in El Calafati. This is a recording of the team's initial meeting in Argentina from Mr. Aisa's body camera. Are you Mahir? Mahir Aisa. Mrs. Vukovic is in the car. Good. Glad she made it. What's with the uh, body cam? That's what the boss requested. And at the amount she's paying me, I'm not saying no. You will have a body cam too, once we start the hike. And one for Mrs. Vukovic. Oh. We'll see about that. And you? Just here to document things? Or are you going to hold your own? I'll be fine. I'd be more concerned with Mrs. Moreno. She still wants to return? From what my ear tells me, she needs to. That girl's been trying to start up the mountain since she woke up. Dragana, Rob WD did. Really? Here I thought you were trying to drag me into some stupid shit because you didn't want to pay me back. Told you, Mama, Stari Cretino. Are you ready? My ear and I think we should leave today before noon, if not earlier. The people up in those caves have been stuck for about a week now. And why can't we get local authorities to help? For now, no one can know. And Moreno? Can she make the hike? She has yet to complain. Two broken ribs, and she keeps trying to sling on a pack and grab a ride. Well, then she's coming. She knows the site, and we are going to need her. How far are we thinking the initial climb will be? It's about 25 kilometers to the site from El Chalten, but we'll travel as far as possible on ATVs to quicken the work. I think we'll be able to get within eight, nine kilometers at that point. Problem is, even though the base camp was established around uh, 1400 meters, it's on the west slope, and we are coming from the east. There's a slightly lower pass here to the south, but we're still going to need to clear the mountains, and it's going to be slow work. Mahir, do we have everything I requested? Everything. And I mean everything. Some of it. <laughs> well, it's harder to come by, but we got it. And did you tell your boss? Of course. But she didn't seem to have any objection. For professional control use, of course. Let's just get those people out, if there are any people left. Ten small, water-resistant, hardbound notebooks were included in the list of equipment Mr. Aisa collected. The following is the first written note in Dragana Vukovic's notebook. The majority of Ms. Vukovic's notes are written in Serbian. Polazimo u 10 sati. Majdi je prikupio svu potrebnu oprebu, ali mora da bude dovoljno lagana da se vuče uz planinu. Zabrinuta sam za nekoliko stvari na naspisku, ali Graham nije taj koji bi preterovano reagovao. Zbog toga se sve više... We are leaving at 10 a.m. 
Mayer has already collected all the equipment we could need, but it must be lightweight enough to haul up the mountain. There are a few things on the list I am apprehensive about, but Graham has never been one to overreact, which makes it all the more concerning. I haven't been able to talk with him yet. I haven't even seen him since Kamchatka. But he sent the odd job my way now and again. My ear has filled me in on this site, about the people we are trying to find. That one of them might be dangerous, but Graham still won't talk about why he cares about it all. I think my ear knows. Would have been nice if our client had filled me in. Could have sent an email along with that vet check. The dense fog up the valley is concerning. And then there's the snow clouds. I've done four hikes here over the last seven years or so, and have never heard it stay settled for this long. We'll take the ATVs up the valley as far as we can, but it may be slower than we'd like, with the decreasing visibility the farther we go. Graham keeps saying we need to bring some of the older gear, that the GPS won't work. He'll have to explain himself. If this was just some tourists asking for a hike, I would never advise this trip. The following is the first recording from the body camera assigned to Miss Moreno. It's not on her during the recording, but in her hands as Mr. Aisa shows her how to operate it. The room around them appears to be the small clinic in El Chal 10. Miss Moreno appears injured, but not tired. This is the relevant section. ¿Estás segura de que los quiere aquí? Sí, doctor. Gracias. Estoy bien. También como puedo estar tomando en cuenta todo lo que ha pasado. Could you give me a moment with them? Bueno, Crit se necesita algo. Estar en el otro cuarto. Pero sigo creyendo que no debería regresar a esta montaña. Gracias. No nos quedaremos en su clínica por mucho tiempo. We won't take up your clinic for long. So, you want me to wear this? If you're coming, yes. We're recording as much as possible. All right, we can try. Even now? Once we're on the way. Do you really feel up for this? The ride out there alone is going to strain your ribs. I'm going. I have to. You'll never find that place without me. You'll never get to them in time. How much food and water did they have? Uh, provisions? Enough. It was in the other boxes and bags that I brought up from the camp. It was enough to feed all of us for a week, but there's only Simon, Dr. Liu, and Dr. Guerrero left. Hopefully. What about light sources? Medical equipment? Not enough. Nowhere near enough. Not without the generator. Medical supplies were already scarce when I was patching myself up. We'll be there soon enough. He wants to know if we're going to the mountain. Oh, English, thank God. No, I need to get out there. There were some people who went out to Serator and they were supposed to be back, but I haven't heard from them. Archaeologists. The, there was a guy and his professor from up in Pittsburgh. Is, is that where you're going? The site? You must be Raimi. Yeah. Who are you? I'm Eva Moreno. Simon spoke about you. He recorded videos. Wait, what? You spoke with Simon. Well, so he's here. No, he is not here. He's still up there. Is he okay? What's going on? We're going up to check that. Well, then, let's go. Wait, do you have any experience in mountain climbing? Well, well day hiking and stuff. I row more than climb, but I've got the muscle. I don't care if you're able to row the Pacific. You don't have the know-how. Look, I'm going up that mountain, and I'm coming back down with Simon. I mean, you aren't going to tell me what Rainy. I'm not going to do. Please, can I speak with him for a moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 
Dragana, Graham, let's give them some space, please. We don't need any more weight. But we may need more people to help bring back anyone we find. Uh, assuming we find Hall, Guerrero, and Liu, we're not going to be able to bring them back easily if there's any serious injuries. We already know that Simon Hall is severely injured. We have enough supplies to outfit him. The prep list was extensive. And if he ends up getting killed, hmm, hard in a box, we didn't get hired to be tour guides. This, this isn't some jaunt across the glacier. Well, not this time. We need to explain the risks. Unless Eva is filling his head with bullshit right now, he's just going to come out of that clinic more determined than ever to go up that fucking mountain. We don't have time to explain everything, to play every day. So give him the ones from Simon. At least the ones where that poor guy is talking Stop. to Stop! Dragana, if he comes, he is going to die. I'm not talking about the climb. Once we reach the cave, getting in, he's not going to like what he finds. And then he won't make it out. If you really think that, if you really think they are all dead, then great. We don't need him to help. We'll collect the data, take the photos, and then get out. But I think we're all hoping for a better outcome than that. Whatever we do with him, we should decide quickly. al in Dhab. In this case, lives. Fine. I'm going up that mountain. We know. Talk to me here about your gear. Let's get going. At this point, the camera was turned off. There are several short recordings from all of the assigned body cameras testing their footage, but the recordings are brief. The next relevant section is Mr. Kasner's first written entry in the provided notebook. Checklist Podkotovki Severation. Dragana Dvaj de Provelela Evo Vipisalias Mistnoi Kliniki. The checklist for preparations is complete, double-checked by Dragana. Eva has been released by the local clinic, and we have a sufficient stock of easily transportable medical and rescue supplies for the hike. It's amazing the ingenuity of some of these devices, and the expense. The weather is colder now. It's mid-winter in Patagonia, and we shouldn't be going up there. Dragana is insistent. I know we'll need her up there, but damn if she isn't overly interested in what happened back in Svalbard. Mahir seems to know. He's cautious. At this point, I assume he saw the collected records from the outpost. He knows what we're climbing up to, so he must think it's worth it. Dragana deserves to know, but... well... The way it sounds to talk about all these things makes it... makes it seem like I've lost it. After all this time, I can't sit this out. I got back to Halifax and couldn't sleep. Every night, I thought I heard the sound of Karina's voice outside my door, asking to come in. Any resemblance to that place brought back memories. Whale bones, morning fog, creaking doors, even dark rooms have me thinking of those caves. I... I don't know if it's ever gonna go away. Not until I know the truth. Maybe this will make everything worse. I didn't choose to come down here. I didn't have a choice. But I'll still take that money. And it's still going to the same place. But there is something here. Something bigger than whatever horrific fuckers were down in that ice. When I saw the photos, I couldn't understand if I was still sleeping. I had heard Karina, felt eyes watching me. Sometimes there was this... this girl in the water when I went to the shore. Like a shadow standing on the ocean floor, watching me. But I had never seen anything so clearly as that photo. 
It was her. The same jacket. Her hair. I don't understand how Rosa could have gotten there. But I'm not leaving until this is over. This concludes the records from before the team's departure for Sarah Torre. At this point, I had boarded my flight to Stockholm, Sweden, following the trail of the originally received envelope. This completes the tenth set of documents related to the archaeological team sent to examine and record the petroglyphs found in the Patagonian ice field above base camp Piedra before Graham Kasner's rescue team began their ascent. The White Vault Thank you for listening to Season 3 of The White Vault. The release of Eluka for our Officer and Above patron supporters will begin next month. Many series like Eluka are our way of thanking those fans who help make our works possible. These tales expand on our world and allow listeners to delve deeper into the mystery. Once again, we will also be working on projects like Vast Horizon Season 2, which is a fantastic sci-fi, and Dark Dice, in which the cast from Outpost Freestead plays Dungeons and Dragons, and also Liberty, The Tower, a five-part horror miniseries. We'd also like to quickly give thanks to supporters who chose to give more to make our works possible. These supporters include Jeffrey Alley, Sasha Friedrich, Miko Atsuna, Labette Reed, Rigel Heisler, Jonathan Wade, Likos, Carol Vengroff, Brian Hancock, Shasuro Ajo, Jeffrey Norris, James Reese, Marshall Mintz, Daniel Stewart, Damian Cooter, Marcus Larson, Prameeth Pilari, Keeley Wood, David Shimmer, Rakul Ellefson, Ben Abbott, Zachariah Gutierrez, Brian Feenley, Mark Howard, James Williams, Angelica Sargent, Noah, Big Carl, Jessica Kwasny, Matthew Sinclair, Thor Bjork, Malcolm Hanford, Amy Hudson, Varl Paderiki Clow, Darian Allen, Grumpasaurus, Jaws Williams, soon to be doctor, master photographer and friend, Garish Bralasabramaniam, Joshua Burnham, Thomas Vicarian, Terry Woolley, Kathy Deadly Blonde Robinson, Jonathan Winstead, Alex Reese, Christian Treat, Jennifer Lowry, Jules Pierpont, Matthew Shaluga, Silver Farak, Joshua Karin, Kayla Bilyeu, Allison Rugg, Lisa Chlin Oka's daughter, Intronaut, Gan, Tammy Pretcher, Ryan Fergal, Chili Dan Munoz, Jess Shepard, Ricke Dowry, Saryuko, Haley, Andrew Apollinar, Dr. M.B. Spengler, Joe Rich, Sarah Humphreys, Scott Likens, Shauna Wynn, Ruro Rowe, Lee Singh, Monty, and Jeremy Wallace. In the year 2020, we will be at PodFest in Orlando from Friday, March 6th through the 8th. We will be at Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle from the 12th through the 13th. We will be at MadCon Modern Audio Drama Convention in Halifax in July, and Rose City Comic Con in Portland, Oregon in September. We have many other events we're planning through the year that we'll be announcing shortly. We'll be back in October with Season 4, and in just two weeks, we have Liberty Tales from the Tower. Until then, travel is not advised. Danilo Battistini reading my lines for Lucas Criado, The White Vault, Season 3, Episode 4. Ah. Whew. Shit. Uh, okay. Oh, God. Yes, blew my eardrums out a little bit with that call back. <laughs> Ooh wee. Um. See, doctor, I get it. Oops, not get it all. <laughs> Is there a siren in the background there? Or is that here? All right, that's Baltimore then. That's typical Baltimore. Okay. I was enveloped in the world of possibilities. That's enveloped. Sorry, enveloped. Ah! Hey, can you hear me? All right. Oof. That Skype call is so loud. Lucas and I are heading back down to the cave. Oh my goodness, they're going up to the cave. Simon's over in the kitchen with Lucas getting lectured on how to stop falling on rocks. That was a terrible sip. You probably don't need the sip sound effect, but in case you do, I can redo this actually sipping coffee. <clears throat> Quick, louder, 
further away, slow Spanish. A little torn on that direction. Quick, but slow Spanish. No. Saiba está la cocina con Lucas, recibiendo lección me sobre cobre. Sorry. <laughs> Been a long day. E7 is not a sunk relief carving. It's an alcove, a possible, oh, repassoir? Oh, oh, okay. I just got chills. The following is a recording from the 360 degree laser scanner smart pad. It is time stamped alongside the first attempted scans of the interior of the cave. Wow, that sounded angry. Grr. Woo, that's it. <laughs> Great job, guys. <laughs>